Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about Firefly Aerospace. So let's dive right into it. Now, what, uh, we are talking about a company that started as a different name, Firefly Space System, that was started on January 2024, uh, 2014. Now, that went bankrupt and got liquidated. Now, the reason behind it is kind of unclear. Its uh, primary suspect is that there was a court case against uh, Virgin Galactic. Uh, that Virgin Galactic was like, you know, that uh, Virgin Galactic space companies, they like literally had some proprietary information, proprietary tech they were working on. The employees from this company took data from there and formatted a hard drive. While the court case was like resolved or something, but uh, they did figure out like the hard drives were purged that was classified as evidence was destroyed so many investors pulled their hand it's like again may be convicted may not be convicted but the moment that was proven that like you you have destroyed evidence um, like almost like Hillary Clinton uh, it's like no no just like at that point uh, the company went bankrupt that happened on March 2017 however uh, new company new, uh, noon sphere uh, this company literally recreated this brand under Fire, uh, Firefly Aerospace under this individual uh, Maximum Pavlov and uh, problem was that this individual literally uh, made this company out of thin air after dissolution and quite amazingly they figured out like uh, throw away all the hula lola technology because they originally they wanted to design uh, you know uh, Aerojet engines, uh, Aerojet, well, Aero Spike engines, pardon me, Aero Spike engines, they're like, no, no, go back to drawing, but simplify everything. And he had uh, enough links in Ukrainian technology, which mind you is very uh, amazing in terms of rocket technology. They were like, okay, turbo pumps and all that jazz, they got uh, data here. So he's very important in order to make this company come out of nowhere. And that happened like just after uh, television, uh, he had 50% stake in that, but because of this individual uh, war was started now usa has a very strict policy regarding anything that is related to space technology meaning you could be working in any other country everything is fine everything awesome even company will uh, basically space force will tell you uh, you did nothing wrong but if your country goes to war they assume the worst as in like you could lose meaning technology that are uh, integral to space technology of USA could be compromised. In those sort of scenario, you have to let go of the authority or let go of the contract. So uh, basically he had to let go of 50% of the stake. So uh, that was like a bit difficult, but again, this individual made everybody's life difficult. So can't blame too much, but it had to be done. And again, it's not like, oh, company should not be like Ukraine is handling. Again, you would do the same thing if you were in a position where it's like, dude, you cannot have security lapse. You definitely cannot have a company that is working on your national security level technology in a country that is active war zone. No, just that's just a no. And again, there was a proper letter sent and all that jazz. Like it was not just like hostile takeover. It was like, please, can you do this? And this is the reason. Again, he denied it. Like there is no security risk. But again, I would do the same thing. You would do the same thing. Like anybody who's responsible for a country's national security, well, they will do the same thing. So that uh, like again from a financial point of view this company had a very rocky start so the first rocket as in alpha now it has 100 percent made in usa what does that mean that simply mean usa uh, had a very harsh wake up when russia actually started to go yolo uh, basically went full cuckoo uh, usa realized the majority of the rockets national rockets not spacex national rockets relied on rd series engines that were from Russia. So that was like, oops. And surprisingly large of the contracts were coming from Ukraine. Both of them went up. So they realized very early on, it's like uh, that sloppiness that they were experiencing, like, you know, outsourcing everything was coming back to bite them in the ass. So they're like, making USA is absolute priority for national level security system. So this allows this company, basically Firefly, to get some uh, extra leeway in terms of uh, uh, contract acquisition. And this is one ton class rocket. Now that is very important. One ton is a very awkward kind of range because there are rockets that are like 100 kilograms, 200 kilograms, uh, 300 kilograms, 500 kilograms, like almost half ton and below. That's a lot of rockets in there. But here's the, the moment you go to like, what if I need a five ton? Uh, then it's like, okay, there are some big rockets. What if I need 10 tons? There are a lot of big rockets. If What if I need 20 tons? Falcon 9 is there. But what if you need only one ton? Nothing is there. So this company is there. And one ton is like a very healthy LEO satellite weight. It's like, it's a very good for that. So that spot, one ton and uh, plus spot was very open. There was no exact rocket built for that exact purpose. So this company dived directly into that. Now they are building carbon composite structure. Now one thing you have to understand, when you scale things up, 
things ratio and proportions change meaning uh, material like carbon fiber will be awesome in small scale but the moment you scale it up to let's say starship level it no longer makes that kind of sense so that's why i do not expect every large rocket to be made out of this it's still in one ton it still gives you a little bit of advantage compared to basically lithium aluminium alloy that uh, otherwise they would have used but not too much they are using lox and rp1 uh, basically a normal system and they are named engines river now if you are familiar with firefly tv show which was quite amazing tv show uh, rivers is the main bad guy i have no idea why the heck they named engine into the bad guys but that's what they did and to simplify the cost they have simplified the gimbal why gimbals are very expensive on top of that uh, if to, you have two access gimbal you have to add a very complex piping in order to allow uh, movement for that consequence your plumbing cost goes up now you cannot have zero uh, you know uh, gimbal simply because again how would engine work you have to have a lot of engine in order to do thrust vectoring four is not enough of them so what they did is they only had single axis gimbal it simplified plumbing simplified the cost but then the question becomes how the heck you will manage your rocket you can't so you have to have even numbers of it meaning two of them will literally uh, gimbal in one axis two of them will gimbal in another axis combined all of these four systems if it's avionics gives you the advantage of controlling the full rocket as if you had two axis control so that's why they can simplify their rocket and uh, yet have a good system. Consequence, if they lose one engine and let's say somehow they have enough thrust to do their job, they will have very difficult time, uh, you know, maintaining stable path simply because 50% uh, of thrust vectoring would be gone if you lose one engine. So engine wise, they are not that tolerant. But again, you're not expecting to like lose engines in like, you know, only four engine system. Now consequence of using one gimbal per engine design is that that cannot be used in upper stage their upper stage is using one engine exactly like majority of the rockets but consequence is that because the gimbal design they had to redesign the system so core technology is the same they just had lightning one basically they redesigned the plumbing and redesigned the gimbal system so be two axis that is lightning one dual axis uh, system basically this puppy and uh, it's running on tap off cycle with open loop what does that mean Tap off simply means it is burning the combustion chamber. There is a hole from the combustion chamber that is taking the exhaust, full thrust exhaust, like basically maximum temperature, maximum pressure exhaust. Now it goes through turbine. Side effects turbine is not going to last very long, but again, it's not a reusable system. So turbine goes through it and just vents it out. Just let it go. It is a bit inefficient doing this way, but it is super simple because you do not have to deal with gas generators. You do not have to deal with many complicated things if you do this. So it does simplify it. And given the fact that it's open cycle, you're just throwing it away. Basically, these four knobs, it simplifies your life exponentially. And this whole company's whole focus is that one ton to orbit, I would be the cheapest. They're not focusing on making the rocket the cheapest. They're focusing on the ro making rocket cheap enough for one ton, meaning there should not be any other way where you can launch one ton rocket uh, object into low earth orbit lower cost than them you can find lower uh, cost rocket but again none of them will be able to carry one ton to low earth orbit so that's the whole game that's why they have this weird arrangement where they're like single gimbal uh, open tap off cycle systems that's the whole point of it everything fine-tuned for one thing make it as cost effective for one ton as possible so they launched it well uh, the first launch went boom which is not surprising and they had faulty wiring thankfully that is a very good thing to have simply because if all the problems you could have you do not want to have structural problem you definitely do not want to have engine problem you could have software problem that does happen and has happened with uh, national security level satellite systems so that would be okay the wiring problem again minor issues but again all, all the problems you could have that's a very low level st stress so they did have that now in 1 october 2022 7 a.m the universal time coordinate they launched the rocket and it was successful they launched up to 300 kilometer in terms of altitude and uh, they had a lot of sp uh, small payloads i have not provided the name below because it's a very long list like surprisingly long given the fact that it's a giant rocket so it can do that um, the second stage also achieved reignition that is a mind-blowing thing because you have to understand even spacex took time like after falcon 9 was a thing that was actually working still took time to achieve reignition in space and they achieved it directly that's a mind-blowing thing uh, to achieve reignition because if you achieve reignition meaning you can have a lot of uh, leverage basically you can literally have 500 kilogram low earth orbit satellite one orbit uh, shut down the engine literally reignite the engine change your orbit orbit inclination orbit angles and all the jazz and just dump your satellite to other things that's a awesome thing to achieve that technology in just one go uh, that's awesome
and uh, what payloads they had interesting payload is nasa tech ed star uh, education star basically this is 15 and yes nasa is launching hundreds of them so idea with nasa is that they're gonna do multiple small scale testing from all the cubesat like this number 15 so they are gonna plan to do multiple of these and then they collect all the data then they plan the next big thing so this was 3u cube satellite meaning 10 centimeter 10 centimeter by 30 centimeter not that big and then there was a, another satellite delivery system that was pico bus for pico sat deployment meaning cube sat nowadays is so big that we can make satellites so small that you can have a deployer that fits inside a cube sat so basically you launch a cube sat that launches a pico bus uh, and that bus deploys multiple pico satellites yes pico satellites could be very small like some pico satellite designs are so small that they are size of a coin so yes it can be done technology has uh, miniaturized surprisingly efficiently nowadays so launch uh, did work everything went as it should and it's surprisingly amazing especially this part that they had second engine reignition in space that's good that's 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 good so what are their plans? Now their plans are really, really big plans because even though they only had one successful orbit, their plans is very simple is that they're going to do six launch next year as in like 2023 and they're going to do 12 launch 2024. So their plans are set. They have uh, customers. Everything is lined up. They're good. They're ready to go. As long as they keep, uh, you know, improving their cadence, they're good. And they're getting a lot of support from NASA and Space Force. Now, one uh, critical reason you have to understand that. NASA and Space Force, they have learned the hard way that USA, even though having such a large space uh, technology colony, they still does, had way too much vulnerability, meaning Ukraine goes, half of your rocket goes away. Russia goes, you literally lose the ability to send astronaut to ISS. So they have learned the hard way that they are surprisingly vulnerable. So they are looking into every possible option. You show them the probability that you're going to work out, they're like, here's your money, shut up and work. So surprisingly, a lot of demand is there. And this company knows that, that every economist will tell you, small rockets do not make sense, financially speaking. So it's like, why the heck everybody's doing it? Again, everybody's doing it as a starting point. Meaning, uh, of course, if you want to build a, like, let's say 18 wheeler, you're not gonna build your first, first truck that is 18 wheeler. You're gonna build your first truck that has four wheels only. Then you move to six, then you move to eight. That's how you do. You do not just like, ta-da, you go brick by brick. So you build a small rocket, figure out the technology, lay out the, all the paperwork, all the hulululu that you have to do, all the hoops that you have to jump through. You sort all of that out then you scale up the engine and with liquid rockets it's surprisingly easy to scale up like for example in case of uh, spacex they scaled up from one engine to five engine design and then they realize it, it's not that big of a jump so they're like how about we go yeet five engine and directly jump to nine aka falcon nine so that's the whole point that's why every company starts with a small system and jumps to big as big as possible as quickly as possible that's why rocket labs when they build electron they're in the background as soon as they got electron working as in like okay this is a thing that works we are just sorting it out we need more efficient but we, we have a feel for it that it's gonna be good they started to work on different thing which we call neutron rocket every company has to economics does not allow you to make a lot of money using small rockets that's why falcon nine is such a big thing and that's why spacex is working on e even bigger rocket so reality is this company knows this and given the fact that all other companies are already there they have to be kind of like you know ahead on the curve otherwise if they waited for this rocket to become the next big thing by the time they would have like enough money enough uh, time enough resources to develop the big one other companies would have already surpassed them so they are from day one they are focusing on mlv that is a this rocket 13 ton uh, that's huge. <laughs> that's like literally bigger than a uh, neutron rocket and that's supposed to be the same class of rockets as in India's ISRO's P, um, let's say GSLV Mark III, 13 ton. That's huge. And I mean like you can actually have a human uh, rated capsules on top of it. Like that's huge. Like it can actually attempt to do that. So that's the whole point. So their plans are surprisingly efficient clean and focused meaning we're gonna do launches then we're gonna figure out how to tighten our cadence go from like you know one launches per year to six launches a year then uh, basically two launches per month that's their cadence focus it's like we're gonna keep improving our cadence and in the background every engineer who can work on it they were gonna work on making the large rocket so they will not be like economically bit slapped so their plans are surprisingly fine-tuned it's like from a startup company again it's not that old but uh to call it a like startup but you get that point like they are in awkward stage and google their age they will say like 2014 i'm like no so it is a very stable company with a like a focus point of view it's like i know what we have to do 
So let's understand the market. Well, market is heating up and that comes to back to this another point. NASA and Space Force, they are uh, aware of the vulnerability that uh, Russia-Ukraine war showed to them. It's like, bro, you are too vulnerable to it. So they are looking for multiple redundant path or rocket class, meaning uh, electron rocket, let's say it's uh, under half ton class. They're like, good. Electron rocket, you're good. But here's the thing. Where is another competitor? They are like, okay, Astro rocket, uh, we'll look into you. Again, they are not performing as they should, but at least they have a technology. So they're, NASA and uh, Space Force, they are like, even though they have a very high risk system, they're still, uh, you know, helping them, uh, you know, evolve and giving them payloads to launch simply because they want to have two rocket systems. Every payload class, under half ton, two rocket companies. Under one ton, there is only one company, this company. There was a gap there. So that's why... Um, NASA and Space Force are really taking them seriously. It's like, bro, the rocket that you are building is something that we have, like, you know, lacking. Thankfully, in upper class, they have rocket. They have, like, you know, Atlas series rocket. They have uh, other uh, rocket series that could be worked on, specifically Falcon 9. Other rockets should be working under construction, like Vulcan rockets and all that jazz, and not to mention this giant rocket, 100 ton class. So they have big side taken care of, not the small side. And small side is important for Space Force because Space Force wants the ability to launch a satellite as quickly as possible, meaning if there is a war they want to launch a satellite exactly for that orbit so exactly for that kind of uh, surveillance so they need something that is quick the only way you can have something that quick is that you have two or three of them so they are trying for as many as possible but realistically if they have even two successful companies that would be enough so and more and more companies are reaching orbit at this point in time meaning if you look at uh, the timeline from where people started as in like okay we started a company to when we actually achieved all orbit that gap is shrinking and it is shrinking surprisingly consistently meaning we went from maybe some company will achieve it but the second launches will be failure to like no companies will reach it companies will reach it yeah company will reach it like the time frame is shrinking drastically it's almost like becoming how quickly we are getting new mobile phones it's a really really good like surprisingly large number of company this is the third company i'm talking about that has successfully achieved orbit and like in few years like decade is too old now like oh one decade ago oh, that you are too old. Like in five, six years, companies are coming and they're designing a rocket, building a rocket, launching a rocket, achieving orbit. So who's going to be victor? Because there are so many companies and there are so many companies working from Germany, India and uh, UK also. So who's going to win? Well, uh, reality is there are three core factors. Factor number one, cost, obviously. Factor number two, cadence. Now, this is far more important than you may think because he has deal. Let's say Rocket Lab is like, awesome, we got this. You go to Rocket Lab, it's like, bro, I want a satellite launch. It's like, okay, $10 million, we're going to have your satellite launch two uh, months from now. You're like, okay, okay, we can work with that. And then there is this company, uh, $12 million. It's like, bro, they're giving me $10 million. It's like, I'll launch your uh, satellite next week. It's like, shut up and take my money. Cadence is very important. For many missions, cadence is like, shut up and take my money. And that's why, like, that's the whole point, Space Force. It's like, bro, I don't care about money, get it now. So cadence is very critical aspect. For every company that is starting to work in that, uh, you know, small satellite vehicle, they have to have super high cadence, meaning weeks is not something that is acceptable. Inside a week, that is, was, they're looking for day, as in like, oh, on fourth day, the moment you get the satellite, on fourth day, we would have launched it. That's what people are aiming for. So cadence is very important. Even with higher cost, people will, uh, you know, willingly pay for that if you have high cadence. Then we come to the flexibility aspect, meaning you will have diverse group of people trying to get your stuff, meaning you will have college students, you will have universities, then you will have space force. So there are different kinds of requirement. The way you are treating one should not match with the other. Like if somebody is like, take a shut up and launch, you will just do that. You shut up, you launch, you just give them the bill. And if somebody is like, you know, hey, bro, we do not have that kind of money, but we also want to launch it, you will try to do ride sharing as quickly, as efficiently as possible. So you have to be very uh, accommodating, quote unquote. So any company that figures these three things are cost, cadence and flexibility is more likely to be successful and long-term survivability, be mindful, these things, small rockets, they are flat out economic downturn, meaning they will not work in long-term. It's like marathon race is always won by who has like long-term plan. Same thing goes here. So that's why Rocket Lab literally started with Electron. They are like jumping to Neutron. And uh, same goes with Astra. Even Astra has a background plan of making a bigger rocket. And this company literally from day one is like, we know for a fact that small, small rocket is just a proof of concept. And like SpaceX surprisingly early knew this. It's like, you know, uh, Falcon 1 is just a proof of concept. The moment you got Falcon 1 working properly, boom, Falcon 9, go home, everybody else. So long-term sustainability, survivability depends on scaling up. How quickly, how efficiently you scale up, it works. And that will remove anybody who's trying to do solid boosters. Uh, solid boosters are very difficult to scale up. It can be done. It's just like in a liquid system, you can just add the number, uh, add 
more numbers of engines. In liquid, uh, solid system, it's not that easy. Must build big, efficient rocket as quickly as possible. That's the future end of the game. And ISRO has to step up because this company literally looked into ISRO. It's like, huh, PSLV is launching a lot. Why? Because it's not too small, not too big. That's why. They literally target the first rocket they launched is directly targeted at PSLV, which is India's workhorse. And then the second rocket they have directly targeting on the heavy horse of India's uh, space launch complex, that is uh, GSLV Mark II. I think GSLV Mark II. And again, you have to understand the heavyweight category is already taken care of. So right now, realistically, the space market is heating up. Like I back in the days, you can count how many companies could launch. Right now, there are hundreds of companies opening. 50, 60 companies have actual prototypes. Uh, 10, 20 companies are actually at uh, uh, test pads and few companies have already reached orbit. So the market is hot at this point in time, like idiotically hot. So this was my presentation on Firefly. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.